Welcome back to the summit, everyone. Continuing with a very exciting program. Very happy and honored to have our next guest, Dr. Wondrea Pennington. Dr. Wondrea Pennington is an integrative physician, psychedelic therapist, best-selling author, and host of the Conscious Evolution podcast and events. For over 20 years, she has specialized in providing holistic healing programs on air and around the world for trauma recovery, building resilience, and promoting self-love. She's also Senior Advisor for Program Facilitation for the award-winning Beckley Retreats. Thank you for joining us, Andrea. Wonderful to have you here. Mm, it's an honor. Thank you so much, Joe. Yeah, so a similar path seems like there's some things in common here. Yeah, curious yeah. to hear about um, to hear about you. So uh, I'm just open up with some questions here. You know, that's my story, right? I, I was family medicine. Um, and I was trained in California. I think you were over in the Bay Area, or I thought I heard something that you lived part of your life there. But I was in Southern California, primary care, and then you know had my journey into psychedelic healing. How about you? How did you end up <laughs> on this show here? <laughs> well, I, I also trained as a physician. In the beginning of my career, I, I did pedi pediatrics, but in my third and fourth year of medical school, I was exposed to expanded states of consciousness for drug and alcohol detox using an acupuncture protocol. And you can imagine fourth year med student, that was kind of eye opening and mind expanding to realize that there's so much more to this mind body connection than what we were taught in traditional medical school 25 years ago. And doing this work with eating disorders and substance use disorder led me into trauma training um, as a primary care doc I felt very ill-equipped to deal with a lot of the, the childhood trauma, attachment trauma that I was seeing. And so through a, a sort of fellowship program in somatics and, and a variety of trauma modalities, I started to recognize that there was a majority of my patients that just did not love themselves and they would sabotage their healing process or switch addictions. And I just became really fascinated as to why some people could have trauma in their background and bounce back or bounce forward with post-traumatic growth and why some people would get stuck. And so for the last 18 years, I've really focused on resilience, post-traumatic growth and self-love. And as it always happens in these cases, I learned so much from my patients about my own lack of self-love that I did even more work on myself, which of course led me onto the shamanic path. I was introduced to ayahuasca um, just about a year after I had my daughter and sitting in some, some trance dance ceremonies and working with a shaman, I realized that there was a whole lot of programming that I was aware of, but I had no idea how much it was influencing my sense of self-worth, um, and how much it was influencing how much I folded and molded myself into these various roles, whether that was my medical role, I was also working in television and media. And I think for me, being on the shamanic path helped me reclaim parts of myself and really reintegrate mind, body, and spirit for my own well being. Now, because I was working in the media, I didn't tell a lot of people that I was working with plant medicine. Uh, I even had a, a few years in the DC area where I was working in the underground with MDMA therapy. And when I left my big media position, that's when I started to share a little bit about my path. And it's been the last, I, I guess, six years that I have openly shared that I healed a lot of my trauma through ayahuasca and sitting with psilocybin mushrooms. And in the last few years, I've decided to incorporate it in my retreats and in, in my one-on-one -on -one sessions to help the folks that are really struggling with the traditional psychotherapeutic models. Yeah. Wow. No, it's, it's beautiful. It's very powerful. Yeah. Exciting, exciting journey. So, you, I mean, you're talking about, you started mentioning this, that, you know, you share, you're openly sharing about your own healing journey with psychedelic ceremonies. And so can you tell us a little bit about how you let go of guilt, shame, low self-worth, you know, through psychedelic healing? Yeah, it, it 
was gradual, I, I have to say. Um, one of the things that was really uh, impactful in my life was my mother. She was also a physician and trained in acupuncture. She's the one that introduced me to that acupuncture protocol. My mother grew up in South America from British Guyana, and she had a lot of childhood trauma that never got treated, never sat in therapy, never sat with any sacred plants. And it was during a, an ayahuasca ceremony that I was able to connect with her soul. Um, I should say that my mother also had Alzheimer's at the time. So this was about 2015-ish when I realized that there was, there was like this psychic residue that was transmitted from her to me. And so, as you know, with ayahuasca, a lot of us see visions. And I saw these very clear visions of my childhood home all the way back to when I was a baby. I mean, before I could speak. And I was able to, after these ceremonies, I connected with my sister, who's 12 years older than me, to just verify like what I saw. I asked her certain questions and she literally said, you can't possibly know those things. You were just a baby but yet I knew them. And it was the beginning of me understanding that a lot of the challenges that I faced. So in my early adult years, I really suffered with like imposter syndrome, despite having the medical career and a media career, I never felt like I was good enough. And I was really compulsively driven to prove myself. So I was always fact checking and getting multiple degrees and certifications. And through the plant medicine journey, I was able to understand how little baby Andrea took on these beliefs and little by little through these ceremonies, especially when my mother transitioned uh, a year and a half ago, I was able to give back, give back the pain and the unhealed trauma from her. And I literally saw her in one, one of these visions, like go back into the light, taking the trauma so that it could be healed. And I came out of these ceremonies, just feeling lighter um, and feeling this sense of forgiveness, forgiveness for my mom, you know, being that she was an unhealed child of, you know, family dysfunction and then forgiveness for myself, because a lot of the, the childhood drama led me into some teenage drama, um, stuff that I was so not, not proud of. I was really ashamed of, of acting out. But as I was able to give back that energy and understand that it wasn't my fault that I had, as a baby, just taken these things on unconsciously, it, it freed me up. And I had so much more compassion for myself that that's, that's how I was able to get rid of the guilt and the shame and, and really embrace living on my own terms. Yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of that, right? There's a lot of, well, first of all, British Ghana, I went there one time to to, to say Kaitur Falls is one of the it's this giant waterfall over there. It's beautiful, gorgeous, beautiful place. And, you know, very tropical place. A lot of there is a little indigenous, you know, uh, presence and influence that that continues and lingers. And, and, and on top of the other influences, you know, African influences, East Indian, all this like, you know, tropical magic that's up in that place. And and there's a lot of healers born over there that are, you know, deeply connected to the nature and to the plants, you know, that that kind of. I don't know that it seems like it's it's easy for them to to figure out how to connect and work, you know, with these medicines. And so it's beautiful. And your mother as a doctor, you know, I mean, everything she went through and still a doctor, you know, uh, is, is very impressive. And but, you know, probably on this healing path, you know, this mm. uh, these gifts, right, to try to help and heal. And and that's really beautiful. This idea, I think we see that so often you know, taking on these things and, and taking them inward, you know, this issues, and then you, you turn it against yourself uh, over what, you know, you're exposed to not understanding that it wasn't you, it was, you know, something they went through and it wasn't them, you know, it's something that's just coming down, you know, that that's not probably good for them either. And they, they, you know, they need this healing and then you, you do it. And then bringing the spirituality, bringing the divinity into the picture. So it's like, wow, look, this can be given back, this can be given up, this can be, you know, transformed. It's powerful. I mean, I guess this is a spiritual context. You know, is that, I, this is something I want to ask you since we're here. Um, you know, what, I, what I'm what i seeing in this, talking to all these people and you with your experience, 
there's this idea about we see more like emotional regulation, you know, as part of this healing, uh, this trauma healing, what does it look like for the doctor, for the biology, you know, it's like, okay, this increased emotional regulation that helps people out of eating disorder, helps people out of addiction, helps people out of these things. And, and it seems like a big part of what helps people move forward in those kind of deep emotional processes is this spiritual context. I don't know, is that your experience or is that how are the psychedelics helping in that sense? Well, it certainly was that way for me. Um, reconnecting with spirituality gave me more of a sense of peace. And, you know, when you mention uh, Guyana and some of the roots, like there are people in my family that had Amerindian roots. And what was the, what was interesting for me is as I went through this, this healing process, and then again with um, psilocybin mushrooms, I was able to uncover like all sorts of oppression. Like my mother came from a colonized country, but my mother being born in the thirties, she had this fond love for, for Queen Elizabeth. She was grateful to Great Britain. She was able to go there um, for nursing school in London before she immigrated to the US and became a doctor. So in our household, the whole energy and vibe towards this colonial influence, she had a very positive aspect. Now, of course, she was able to admit when the country started going south and you know when Guyana turned out to be a mess, but what I understood for myself was when I experienced certain oppression, certain uh, racism in the United States growing up, my mother, her response was just, you know, brush it off, you know, just show them that you're better. And so I had sort of this internalized oppression. And as I started to reconnect with my roots, it gave me this spiritual connection that yeah, that emotional regulation seemed to come naturally. And I, I attribute that to being like realigned with the authentic self. You know, in these ceremonies, I felt this connection to my true self, to the divine. And in terms of what I experienced with that imposter syndrome and perfectionism, there was a whole lot of nervous system dysregulation because I was trying to perform and I was trying to be accepted and I never felt comfortable in my own skin. Whereas after coming through these psychedelics, I felt so aligned and, and reconnected that the, the stress and the drama of everyday life didn't rattle me as much. And then as I studied more in um, emotional regulation and uh, mindfulness and meditation, I found that these were things that I could continue to develop and build upon. And I think that's what helps a lot of our clients with psychedelics is that maybe they've never felt like I didn't. I never felt unconditional love until I sat with some of these medicines. I never knew what it felt like to face shame or to face guilt without having to, to crumble or hide. And I think that that's one of the gifts of sitting with psychedelics. Beautiful. Yeah, I think it's, it reminds me, my family's from Colombia, you know, and, and, and definitely have family on the, the colonial side of the, of the story. And you know, um, whatever pride in, in Spain and, and, uh, and that the European kind of roots of that side. And then there's the other side, you know, indigenous and the rest of Colombia and everything that's been there. And I think it's, it's kind of like, it just seems like it's related to so many things. It's like, okay, so the people that go along with the colonial kind of opportunity, right? Okay, here's the opportunity. If you go along with this and this, then the opportunity is there. And we got to be grateful for the opportunity because look, you could be over there and you know, that's pretty rough over there. Um, so then you get this, this unconditional situation, you know, where you're like, okay, if you do this, then you get this. And then you, and so what happens along those lines, and we see that in our society and, you know, whatever in society in general, people get more and more disconnected from themselves, trying to be this other thing you know, so that they can get whatever it is they're supposed to get. But like, uh, we have a friend, he actually is part of this program as well. Daryl Slim is a Navajo medicine man, a good friend of ours. And he says, he says, you know, everybody thinks they're going to figure it out. They're just, you know, one thought away, like if this, and then, well, but maybe if I just do this, or if I do this, like you said, maybe if I get this other degree or actually this, and then, you know, it's like, and then by the time they're done, they're 24 thoughts away from the only place, the one place that they ever experienced joy which was like in this moment, you know, like you said, in themselves, through themselves, like that's the only chance they have to really feel it is like through themselves. 
So yeah, I think it's, and, and it's that, it's that unconditional love you talk about. I mean, you mentioned that. So it's like, that's, I mean, I think that's one of the powerful things that people can be opened up to. Uh, you that are working with this, you know, why do you feel group work with psychedelics? And that's, a, that's an important new area. And I'm very excited about that myself coming from a lot of ceremonial background and I see it. So what about group work with psychedelics? How, do, what, what does that bring to be supportive to healing and transformation? I find that group ceremony work, group therapy in general, provides a safe container for people to reconnect with others. So in my experience, I found a lot of people had these attachment wounds. They had these relationship wounds from childhood. And while in our one-on-one -on -one therapy, we could create a safe therapeutic alliance and give people a new opportunity to trust what I found in group therapy from 12 steps to you know, now psilocybin ceremonies is that people get to experience what it's like to be repaired in relationship. And they also get to experience what it feels like to be their authentic selves. Because when you're in a group ceremony and you start to hear other people purging or crying or in an integration circle, they're starting to open up and they're sharing, you realize, wow, I'm not alone. Like, They've been through what I've been through, maybe not exactly, but it's that mirroring that gives us this sense of solidarity, that we have this shared humanity. And so I find that even though I have a lot of clients who want to do one-on-one -on -one VIP sessions, I tell them like, you, you will benefit greatly from the group dynamic. You know, of course it has to be safe. It has to be a, a good setting. You have to have folks who know how to manage their own nervous system but what I find is that when you get to share, when you get to see and be seen, when you feel heard, understood, and validated, that can be incredibly reparative in terms of relationship dynamics, you know, let alone all the other aspects that people get in healing ceremony. Yeah, very powerful. It's true. I mean, it's just, it's community, I guess, right? It's community. And where so many people are missing or lacking, again, for this like conditioned goal of like, oh, independence, and I'm going to do this and do that. But I think at some point, you know, the, the pain of life and everything, it's, it's too much voltage for one person. And it's like, it's really through like a community, uh, like, like a ceremony or whatever that is, a space where we're going to all connect and open up and hold it together you know, that, that we can manage. I, I don't know. I see that a lot. I see, I see something that's, it's too, they were holding on to it so much, but then now with somebody else there, oh, wow. And like you said, one-on-one -on -one is one thing, but to have the, the community, you know, that it's just a normal uh, human reality that, that it's, I guess we're, we're used to that. We're made for that, you know, being around a, you know, a, a lot of people really, or, you know, a number of people. So I think, that's really important. You know, we're seeing that. I'm seeing that. Uh, I don't know. Just quick question. Like what kind of I, I've started exploring uh, with ketamine, you know, group ketamine retreats and even bringing, you know, other ceremonial aspects to it. Uh, I don't know. That's a question for you. How do you how do you see that this is a big part of this summit is bridging, you know, perspectives and getting diverse perspectives into it all the way from doctors to traditional healers and everywhere in between, you know, and all the things that that we don't expect um, you with your experience and your background and this, like, you know, this healing line coming through you, you know, that for me that I sense, uh, how do you see bringing those elements or learning from like ancestral tradition to bring it to psychedelic therapy? We got groups is one, you know, are there other elements that you see important or useful for you? Absolutely. I, I, actually came into uh, ag agreement <laughs> to start facilitating with ketamine and other plant medicines, specifically to facilitate groups. Because for the last 20 years, that's been my expertise, whether in person or online, group facilitation has just been my jam. And when I started to really delve into the research and see that there are a lot of black and brown folks who would never feel comfortable doing psychedelics in the way that I have or the way that others fly around the world. And so I thought, well, if I'm going to come into this space, I want to bring that group aspect. And so like you, I think the next frontier for me is providing group ceremonies. And I say ceremony because like you, I, I want to bring in that aspect. I know I think being at this stage of my career, I don't have to fit in the box. 
And so the people that tend to seek me out want this holistic, this integrative, this um, ritualistic format. So that's that's my intention. Um, bringing in ritual and ceremony, I've also found is an, an easier way to, to teach people what it feels like to have a connection to something that's not religious, but is drawing on wisdom and traditions from, from so many years. And so those are the aspects that, that I'd like to bring in, the sense of ritual, the sense of intention, the sense of um, even using, uh, not appropriating, but using other things like energetic clearing before we step into the ceremony space, an invocation, whether you consider that a prayer or an affirmation, also calling on the ancestors or at least honoring them as you move into your ceremony space, calling on them for protection and for support. So those are just a few of the aspects that I think will be really helpful in this in the ceremony space with ketamine. Yeah, beautiful. No, it's, it is. It's a delicate matter, you know, and it's like we're trying to steer clear of, of you know, any kind of like religious misunderstandings. But then we're saying, hey, this spiritual side is is part of it and it is mysterious and we don't all have all the answers. And so leaving some room you know, it's like for you in your own journey as a, as a doctor, if you only stayed in that lane, you know, you wouldn't get to where you are now. It's like the before trying to fit into this other box. And now people are like, wow, I want to be like her. <laughs> and they're like, I want to do, I want to know what she does. You know, it's a thank you for your journey, you know, for finding through all that and, 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 and becoming who you are, because it does open up a path and it does create an example for people. And it, and it's a hope and it's a real, a real difference, you know, just one quick question I want to get, I, I know we want to get into um, an attunement with you and I look forward to that, but just as a doctor, you know, opening yourself up to, in other words, going, it sounds like going very deep in your own healing, right? In other words, that's the key to being able to share and walk with people through these kind of the depth of their experiences that they may need to go through. Um, as a doctor, like, you've seen a lot of healing probably i mean I'm talking about like effectiveness you know in other words why incorporate these things like oh why do this why do that oh it's like well because they're getting better you know it's like isn't that what we're about isn't that what we we're trying to do versus like spinning your wheels with this person spinning your wheels with that person so it has that been your experience that you've seen shifts and changes in, in people's lives patients illness that before maybe with what we had learned maybe wasn't getting there Yes, absolutely. And, you know, that's one of the things that's inspired me about your work is being able to look not just at mental health, but what else in a person's life or their physiology changes. So for me, after working with folks with, with you know, serious trauma, doing everything we could, I mean, we were bringing in somatics and acupuncture and psychology and psychotherapy and, and even spa treatments just to help people get back, you know, into self-care. But there were still folks that would get just so far. And that's one of the reasons why I've shared psychedelics with a certain number of my, my patients and my clients. So I find that when we bring that holistic approach, most people are actually open to it. Now, of course, I think the bias is people who either knew me from TV and documentaries, they know that that's kind of my lane now. So I probably attract people who are open-minded who want to go and explore. But what I found is that as people are coming in and they're settling their, their karmic ties or their, their healing from these emotional wounds from their childhood, they're also seeing that some of their autoimmune conditions are improving. We've had people with allergies and asthma and other autoimmune conditions that have dramatically improved after resolving some of these longstanding traumatic issues from childhood. You know, and so for to see that, to see people start to embrace a healthier lifestyle and then their physical health improves, yeah, for me, I didn't need any additional studies or proof. You know, I can I could see it for myself. Yeah, wow, very, very wonderful. No, so exciting to hear about your work and what you're doing. And, and it's just great to have you out there as a voice, you know, reaching people, you know, all the preparation you did on the other side and the media and all that work where it was like, whatever worried about being in all the, 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 that critical world, but then it prepares you to present and to be ready to share, you know, we need that. We, it's important. And so I'm, I'm so happy that you're doing it. Yeah. Thank you for what thank you're doing. You. Thank so, you. So, you know, you talked about 
So I think it's a huge part. It's a huge part of what comes up, you know, at our, at the center we worked at in Peru, you know, Spita is, uh, was my, is my business partner down there was, and she kind of opened up that door along with what we were doing with the Shipibos and very traditional work, but then it was just all, it became about inner child work, you know, so much of it was inner child and, and soul retrieval stuff that we would get into on the shamanic side was like a lot about reconnecting to the inner child, you know, dealing with those traumas or, you know, pre on both sides, like helping people remember things that they, they couldn't have known, you know, one, like what you're talking about, or sometimes in the midst of so much suffering and trouble, they forgot about their joyous childhood moments, you know, in other words, reconnecting and opening that back up, on all these levels and there there is a lot of trauma healing involved and there's a lot of giving back of you know intergenerational trauma or you know freeing ourselves there's a lot of things to work through that um that end up freeing people up you know in a lot of ways and we see that we know this you know adverse childhood experiences and its relationship to lifelong mental health issues and so much that we're learning about all that kind of thing so the healing is so important there so i know you among your other uh things that you that you have that you've got going and you've, you have a attunement meditation that you guide right with um to connect with the inner child and discover hidden stories yes absolutely um this started after i got trained in mindfulness and meditation i would lead our patients after we put in their little acupuncture needles i would lead them through a guided meditation and particularly for the folks who said i'm not a good meditator i can't meditate I find that a guided meditation helps them, you know, stay focused and concentrate. And what I discovered after a few years was that these five steps of the attunement meditation could help people wherever they got blocked. And sometimes they would just stop on one step. They wouldn't get through all five until they could really ease into it. And, and so what I'll, what I'll share today is just a very gentle process, not to get into any traumatic material, but just to connect with maybe that joyful inner child that many of us lose connection with. Sounds great. All right, shall we get into it? Yes, please. So I will invite you, if you're, if you're able, if you're not driving or chopping vegetables or caring for a small child, if you can just settle into where you are, where you're sitting, really get grounded. And by that, I mean, feel yourself sitting on the chair or the bed or your yoga mat and feel the solidness of mother earth supporting you and just know that for the next few minutes this great mother earth has got your back and you can as much as you feel comfortable to you can lean into and relax into the strength of the earth in the beginning of this attunement meditation i invite you to take some deep breaths Quite often we breathe very shallowly, but I'm going to invite you to breathe from the diaphragm, maybe even put your hand on your belly and see if you can really fill your lungs, including those upper lobes of the lungs where CO2 gets trapped, hold at the top, and then exhale, slowly, 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 giving yourself permission to just release. And again, from the diaphragm, taking a deep breath in. Hold at the top. And exhale slowly, letting your muscles just let go, let go, let go. And again, another deep breath in. And this time, just imagine that you're breathing in permission. Hold at the top. And exhale, permission to let go and be present. And just feel your body let go as much as you're able. Another deep breath in. And releasing. So now you can just breathe naturally on your own. But with your next inhale, I want you to imagine that you're breathing in light, either from the tip of your nose or the top of your head. Imagine that you're drawing in this gentle white light that fills your head 
and it brings with it waves of relaxation. And as this light fills your head, it relaxes the muscles on your scalp. Breathing in, releasing the tension between your eyebrows and around your eyes. <sighs> Just imagine this light continues to stream down your face, relaxing your jaws. And if you notice that this light gets stuck anywhere, or you encounter darkness or pain, just gently breathe in a little more light there. And with your next breath, imagine that you're breathing this relaxing light down your throat, relaxing your tongue, easing the tension in your neck, down your shoulders. And this light just trickles down your arms to your elbows, down your forearms to your wrists, out through the palms of your hands and the back of your hands, and out through your thumbs and all of your fingers. And once again, just breathing in this gentle light as it fills your chest, oxygenating your blood, releasing tension in your chest and your upper back, easing down your lower back and your abdomen, bringing relaxation to the seat of your pants, your pelvis, down your sit bones, just imagine that this white light continues to drift down your thighs to your knees, down your shins and calves to your ankles. Just flowing gently, this light releases tension, taking it out through your heels and the soles of your feet, out through the backs of your feet and all your toes. And just imagine now that you can scan your entire body and see if this light has gotten stuck anywhere or if there's any tension or pain or darkness, just take an extra breath to breathe in some more of this gentle light there. We're learning to become the witness. You are not your body. You are not your pain. You are not your disease process. You are the witness, the consciousness. And so the first step of the attunement process is allow. We allow ourselves to tune into the body in this present moment without judgment. So in as much as you can, not holding any criticism towards your body for what it's been through or what it's holding, just as much as you can, some curiosity. Allowing yourself to feel whatever is present without trying to shove it away, without judging yourself. The body is a mirror for the subconscious. So sometimes the things that we've hidden away in our subconscious mind will manifest in the body. So as you allow yourself to get present, just scan the body and perhaps ask if you have found pain, or tension, you can ask your body, what do you want me to know? Do you have a message for me? And remembering to hold a little bit of curiosity and compassion for your own feelings, including the racing thoughts, your to-do list. In this first step, we allow whatever is present to be, even giving it the right to be. And now whatever is present, we're going to invite in the energy of loving kindness and compassion. So step two is attune which means we're going to tune into the frequency of love and compassion. So if you could imagine your highest and best self, or perhaps a compassion figure, someone that you could imagine has unconditional love and acceptance for you. It could be 
a grandparent or parent who's passed on, could be a pet, it could be a spiritual figure, it could be Mother Mary, the Christ, the Buddha, Muhammad, could be a saint, an angel, or even a fairy. But just imagine that there's a being that could be witness to whatever's going on in your body and mind with open, loving kindness. And maybe it is your highest and best self. There is at least one being somewhere on some dimension who deeply cares for you. So if you can, just imagine that this compassion figure, wherever they are, is sending waves from their heart to your heart, to your body, to your mind. And imagine that your compassion figure says, it is my sincere desire that you know true happiness. May you be truly happy. And see if you can accept that and let it wash over you. And imagine your compassion figure says, it is my sincere desire that you be free from suffering. May you be free from suffering. See if you can take that into your heart and body. And we imagine that this figure is still sending beams of love and light to you as they say, may you be truly well in body, mind, and heart. And may you live peacefully and with ease. So in this space of loving kindness, just feeling these waves floating around you and through you and inside of you, if it feels safe, if it feels comfortable, I'd like for you to imagine a younger version of you, a happy version of you. Perhaps you can remember a photograph from your childhood where you were smiling and happy, a time where you felt a sense of joy. If that's too difficult, you can imagine any baby, any young child, See if you can tune into that energy of lightness and joy. Sometimes it's hard for us to imagine that we were ever smiling and happy and carefree. So it might take a little bit of imagination. But if you can visualize this child, you could ask them, what do you want me to know right now? What do you want me to remember? And you could ask this child, is there anything that you would like to do? Sometimes we become so focused on being responsible adults that we forgot how to play or be creative. Can you imagine this happy child taking you by the hand, maybe leading you off to color, or go on a swing or something on the playground or blowing bubbles? This might be just your highest and best version of you as a child that you're imagining. And as you see this younger version of you, imagine that you can send from your heart to this child the same phrases of loving kindness as you say, it is my sincere desire that you know true happiness. 
may you be free from suffering. May you be well in body, mind, and heart. And may you live peacefully and with ease. So whatever has come up for you, just know that that tender part of you is there and is receiving this loving kindness from you or your compassion figures. And then we move to step three, which is align. What we aim to do is align our mind with a higher state of consciousness. So as we've let go of our egoic desires and trying to fix things, tuning into that energy of innocence, how could you align your mind with a, a divine mind? You might say, let my mind be guided by peace. Let my mind be guided by love or inspiration. And in that openness, just know that you might get a download, some inspiration later today or when you're journaling or in your sleep. Step four is inspired action. This is a moment where you can ask for inspiration. You can ask for guidance, either from your inner child, or you could even invite in a wisdom figure, your own personal oracle or Yoda. Like, what do I need to know? What is my next right step to stay connected to my innocence, my joy? And just know that it may come in signs or symbols or in your dreams. As we move to the fifth and final step of the attunement process, which is appreciation, I'd ask you to give thanks for all that has showed up here today, your inner child or the imaginary child, sending thanks and appreciation from your heart to theirs. Maybe it's a hug or a high five. Imagine sending appreciation to your compassion figure or your wisdom figure or any of your ancestors who've been supporting you. And now see if you can direct some of that appreciation toward yourself. Thank yourself for showing up here. Even if we're not perfect, we can appreciate our bodies for getting us through this life journey. And now with this loving kindness swirling around, just imagine that your inner child, your compassion figure, any wisdom figures, just imagine that they dissolve into light like a rainbow. And with your next breath in, you breathe them into your heart. They are always with you, just a breath away, a heartbeat away. And now with your own love and attention directed toward yourself, we recite these loving kindness phrases. May I be truly happy. May I be free from suffering. May I be well in body, mind, and heart. And may I live peacefully and with ease. Take another deep breath in. 
And if you're feeling generous, you can send these same waves of loving kindness to everyone watching the summit, to your loved ones. From your heart, sending out these waves, you say, may you be truly happy. May you be free from suffering. May you be well in body, mind, and heart. And may you live peacefully with grace and ease. And just take a deep breath in. And once again, feel yourself grounded, sharing some of those thanks with Mother Earth, with your cushion, with your chair, appreciation for whatever is working in your life, your Wi Fi connection, someone who's been taking care of you or your kids. And then you can stretch. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes and come back into this space. Thank you so much for meditating with me. Thank you again for that. That was wonderful.